Can you tell me about your first meeting with Bob McDonald? Sure. It was uh, back in his first race, back in uh, 1991, and I was actually volunteer. I went to volunteer at the Republican headquarters, the local political headquarters, and I ran into his wife, Maureen McDonald, there. And I then uh, was volunteering there and helping that day stuff envelopes and stuff like that. So she needed some more help back at their house. So I went back there to help uh, with stuffing of, of envelopes and stuff like that. And that's when Bob came in from work and I met him for the first time right there in his house, actually. He was a prosecutor at the time and he just got off work. How was it working for him? Oh, it, it was incredible. He's, uh, he's a phenomenal man. A wonderful individual, and it was it was really great working for him. I worked for him for over four years, uh, for first on the campaign, and then I went on to become uh, his legislative aide, his first legislative aide for a few years, and so um, yeah, so I worked for him a little over four years. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, he, he, yeah, it was it was a great experience. He's a wonderful man to work for, and uh, you know, it's that obviously shows the fact that other people have. I've decided to support him over the years. So, did he have any words of advice before you took his position in the House of Delegates? <laughs> um, no, not really words of advice. I mean, we, you know, we've gone back. I went back politically with him longer than just about anybody else. And um, I guess the old adage, I mean, he never, never actually said this or you know, insinuated at some point, I believe, but be careful what you wish for. You know, it's a wonderful opportunity to represent the people of the 84th district, but there are sacrifices that are made in order to do this job, and you know, that sacrifice usually comes at, at you know, the hands of your family. You, know, you, miss, you miss your family quite often on a lot of occasions. How do you think he handled himself for the campaign for governor? I think he ran a perfect campaign, as close to perfect as, I, as I've ever seen. And I've been involved you know, for quite some time in politics. Uh, he took the high road. He stuck to his message. He definitely wanted to let people know that he's Bob's for jobs. And he laid out his platform. And even when the other side went extremely negative, he, Bob stuck to the high road and you know, kept talking about the issues that actually concern uh, the citizens of Virginia. He, he never retaliated. He never went negative himself. You know, It shows in the fact that he won by over 17 points statewide. What do you think of the famous thesis that McDonald wrote while attending Regent University? Do you think it was as significant as the media put out? I believe it did more to hurt his opponent's race than anything. I believe what happened was his opponent focused on this paper that was written 20 years ago, and his opponent, Bob's opponent, never talked about issues after that. He never talked about the things that actually concern or were of concern to the citizens of Virginia. He, you know, Bob's opponent never talked about jobs. He never talked about uh, health care. He never talked about, you know, what is the state going to do to you know, maintain its AAA bond rating, to make sure that we're the best state to live in, the best place to educate your child. I think the, the actual issue itself regarding the thesis significantly backfired on Bob's opponent. Can you tell me, what do you think of McDonald's plan for transportation? Well, I think it's a multifaceted approach. You know, there's not one answer that fixes the problem. It's such a massive problem that even people who are for higher taxes, that's not that's not the panacea. That's not the silver bullet because you can't. There's not enough taxes that you can raise that actually fix the problem. And so you have to do several things. You have to reform the Virginia Department of Transportation to make sure that they're working more efficiently, and we've started to do that over the last several years. I think you have to think outside the box with the several aspects of um, capturing growth in the economy for the ports or port-related industries, which is part of a part of also the package I think that uh, Governor McDonald's looking at. And you also he wants to privatize the ABC stores um, and use the revenues from that to try to help with the transportation uh, situation. Um, I, I think it's going to take part of all of that, perhaps. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about the ABC at this point. They're they're looking into how much revenues that would actually create, um, and that's a you know it's a different approach. It's an outside of the box thinking approach, and uh, 
you know, the, the, the good thing about what uh, Governor McDonald's doing and what he talked about during the campaign, and, and going back to the other question about how do you think he ran his campaign, is he was talking about issues. And whether you like or dislike Governor McDonald's approach during the campaign or now to transportation, at least he's bringing up ideas and bringing people to the table to try to solve the problem. The past four years, we we never had that approach. The governor that we had never never brought people to the table, never even tried to really solve the problem. He called a special session, or the past governor called a special session on transportation, unveiled a bill that he created with nobody else's input or support or help the night before the special session. So that bill was doomed for failure. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have the legislators working on it and, you know, coming to a consensus on a solution, then, you know, the special session on transportation is never going to succeed. Because, you know, if you unveil it the night before, uh, there's going to be plenty of things in those uh, bill, whether it's a consensus bill or not, that people are going to like and dislike, but you need to get people to, to buy into the overall premise of passing the bill. Our previous governor never did that. He just did what he wanted to do. How do you feel about his service so far? Oh, I think he's doing a great job. You know, I think that he's, he's done a great job. I think he's appointed some really good people to his cabinet. I think... Um, he understands that we need to stimulate the economy in a way that we don't not do it the way the federal government's doing it, but to do it that we create an environment to allow businesses to flourish so that businesses can uh, to hire the people, you know, let the free market work, but allow them the opportunity to cut back on the bureaucracy and the red tape so that they can actually create jobs for people. I think he's done a great job so far. Do you believe that he will live up to his campaign promises? Yes. I've known Bob for almost 20 years now, and he's a man of integrity, a man of his word, and I know that he's going to do everything he can to try to push through uh, the ideas that he talked about on his campaign. Now, obviously, not everything's going to pass, but you know, he's not responsible for the result. He's responsible for his, his position and how he, you know, whether he pushes those ideas forward. You know, we still are the legislature here, and we still have to agree on, on doing certain things. And certain things may look a little different than what he campaigned on. And that's fine. That's part of the process. That's where our founding fathers were brilliant in creating the system of government. That, you know, you have two chambers here. You have the House and the Senate. And things change drastically from one chamber to the other. But that's the whole point. Uh, but no, I do believe he has every intention. I think he will try to live up to all of his campaign promises. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's all the questions that I have. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Uh, no, it's just rare that you see somebody of Bob McDonald's character and quality ascend to the, the, you know, the, such high levels. And I'm just proud of the fact that he's our governor. Uh, he's a wonderful man. Like I said, a man of integrity. He really is extremely thoughtful on the issues. And you know, the one great thing about uh, the governor is if he disagrees with you, he'll explain to you why. And he believes it's his obligation to do that. And that's why so many people voted for him. That's why so many people uh, have, have been supportive of him over the years in the House of Delegates as the Attorney General. He's a man of integrity and a man of his word. 